From the Deepwater Horizon event to giant abandoned ships, these are the biggest salvage projects in the world. Number 7. The MV Cougar Ace, Alaska. The Singaporean vessel Cougar Ace is primarily used for transporting cars from Japan to North America. In 2005, it set a record for most cars unloaded from a ship in Canada. Kind of a weird record, but hey, who are we to judge? A year later, Cougar Ace was carrying 4,812 brand new cars, about 97% of them being Mazdas. In total, the cargo was valued at $117 million. Well, during an exchange of ballast water, the stuff that keeps boats balanced and stable, the Cougar Ace tipped 60 degrees to port, which means the ship looked like this. The crew of 23 was rescued by the US Coast Guard and the Alaska Air National Guard. The cars weren't so lucky. The salvage efforts were not pointless, but somehow did prove fatal for one member of the team. With some luck, Titan Salvage were able to tug the ship to Unalaska Island, where it was finally righted, meaning the ship was no longer tilted. Then it was towed to Portland, Oregon for inspections and repair. The incident was quite the nightmare for Mazda. At first, they said most of the cars were fine, but would not be sold as brand new. After testing the safety of the cars, the company decided to scrap every single one. Number 6. MV Baltic Ace, Netherlands. Well, since we're talking about cars and ships, let's look at the case of the MV Baltic Ace. Built in 2007, this ship did not have a long and graceful career. In 2012, it collided with the container ship Corvus J. The accident happened 25 miles away from the coastal town of Rotterdam, and it is believed it was due to human error. Within 15 minutes of the hit, the Baltic Ace sank to the bottom of the shallow waters of the North Sea. 13 members of the 24-man crew were saved, the rest were either confirmed dead or missing. The search and rescue operation lasted only a day as the freezing cold weather, snow, and massive waves made survival near impossible. At this point, all efforts were focused on actually salvaging the vessel. Shipping lanes in Rotterdam were in danger, and so was the environment. The ship sank in 115 feet of water with 140,000 gallons of fuel remaining inside. By 2014, all the fuel from the Baltic Ace was removed and it was safe to begin cutting the ship. The Baltic Ace had to be separated in eight pieces so it could be safely lifted and removed from the seabed. Number 5. MV Rena, New Zealand The MV Rena was a container ship with a capacity for 3,351 containers of whatever the hell you want to transfer globally. With an engine that had a max output of 29,000 horsepower, this 38,000 ton 160 foot long ship was built in 1990 and served multiple companies throughout the years. In October 2011, the MV Rena ran aground on the Astrolabe Reef near the Bay of Plenty in New Zealand. This was already very bad for the local environment and reef, but things got even worse when the Rena started leaking oil. Because of bad weather, the crew of 20 was evacuated when the ship started shifting. A few days later, the oil spill was declared the worst maritime environmental disaster of New Zealand. A few days later, the ship was sitting at a 20 degree tilt and 88 of the cargo containers fell into the sea. In January 2012, the ship finally succumbed to the sea and broke in two. By 2014, 77% of the cargo was removed and major parts of the ship were salvaged. So what is happening today? Nothing. The ship owners were allowed to abandon the rest of the wreckage with the stipulation that they would have to pay for the ongoing cleanup costs and for the damage the ship has done to the local environment. Number 4. MV Drake, Australia Imagine living a nice, quiet life in Newcastle, Australia, and then one morning you wake up to this monstrosity on your beach. Originally named the Pasha Bulker, MV Drake is a bulk carrier ship that ran aground on the beaches of Australia back in June 2007. The cause for this mishap was not human error. It was the fault of a major storm at sea. Well, wait, never mind. It, it was human error, after all. Ships were instructed to move out to sea because of an incoming storm. 
The Pasha Boker and 10 other ships were like, nah, fuck that mate, and stayed where they were. The 22 crew members all survived the beaching, and no cargo was lost or damaged since the vessel was waiting to be loaded with 58,000 tons of coal. After all was said and done, the beached vessel actually increased tourism to the area, since it's not every day you see such a crazy sight. And of course, someone also tried to sell the vessel on eBay with a starting bid of $16 million. The plan for refloating the ship was simple, just use anchors laid out at sea to guide the ship and have a few tugboats do a tug job on it, <laughs> or drag it out from the beach. While the first attempt didn't go so well, the cables connected to the tugboats kept snapping. The second attempt was much better. The vessel was rotated by three salvage tugboats and it now faced the deep water. They had to shut down the operation due to concerns of an oil leak though. The third attempt proved successful. The ship was finally in deep water again at the nominal cost of $1.8 million. Number 3. Deepwater Horizon Rig, USA Let's move away from ships for a moment and recap on the worst environmental disaster in maritime history. The Deepwater Horizon was a semi-submersible mobile offshore drilling unit that was used to extract oil from the deep sea. It did not end well. At all. I'm not going to get into the mechanics and details of offshore drilling, but let's just say it's somewhere between magic and how the hell did we accomplish this. The Deepwater Horizon was drilling a deep exploratory well in the Gulf of Mexico, at depths reaching 18,360 feet below sea level at 5,100 feet underwater. On April 20th, 2010, high-pressure methane rose to the drilling rig and exploded on the surface, engulfing the platform in flames. Of the 126 crew members on board, 94 made it out alive because of the quick rescue mission that followed the explosion. A lot of people wish this was the end of the story. But the ensuing oil spill of 4.9 million barrels of oil resulted in catastrophic environmental effects and the total area affected by the spill was estimated at 68,000 square miles. Coastlines from Florida to Texas saw their share of oil reaching their beaches. By 2013, 2100 tons of oiled material was removed in Louisiana and it is believed that smaller tar bars and oil patches can be spotted to this day. As it turns out, it's not easy to patch up a hole in the earth a mile underwater. Many agencies and companies were involved in the shutoff operations, but a lot of their proven methods failed. It got to a point where people were considering using nuclear fucking bombs to plug up the leak. So how many billions of dollars were paid out? Transocean, the company that was running the day-to-day -day operations, agreed to pay $1.4 billion for violations of the US Clean Water Act. BP agreed to pay $2.4 billion, but could face up to $20 billion more in damages. Number 2. The Chittagong Ship Breaking Yard, Bangladesh Well, here's a business of opportunity. In 1960, the ship MD Alpine was beached and abandoned on the shores of Chittagong, Bangladesh. A local company purchased the ship and started the scrapping project. The ship was pretty big and most of the work was done by hand, so the project took years to complete, but it was also the birth of the ship breaking industry in Bangladesh. Nowadays, the brutal and unsafe work conditions have not changed, but the landscape sure has. Number 1. Costa Concordia, Italy The Costa Concordia was a beautiful cruise ship that cost some $500 million to build. Its maiden voyage was on June 29, 2006, and not even six years later, the Costa Concordia was involved in a tragic accident off the coast of Isola del Giglio. 32 people lost their lives because proper international maritime law was not followed. All passengers were supposed to be evacuated within 30 minutes of the abandoned ship order, which was also given late. It took over six hours for evacuations to complete. The accident was pretty straightforward. The Costa Concordia hit a rock, all power was lost, and the ship drifted towards the shore and rolled towards the starboard side. After rescue operations were over, it came time to figure out what could be salvaged from the ship. Smith International, a salvage company, assessed that the best course of action was the total write-off of the ship as a constructive loss. They were contracted to remove the fuel from the ship. In 2013, the ship was finally brought back to a vertical position, and the salvage costs rose up to $799 million in total. At which point, I assume the people doing the estimate said to themselves, screw it, let's just round up to $800 million. 
In 2014, the ship was refloated and prepped for towing. Estimates for the total cost rose up to $2 billion. In July 2017, the final pieces of the Costa Concordia were scrapped and recycled, finishing the story of this tragic event. Check out the featured comment below, subscribe for more World on Earth, and I'll see you in the next video.